Hi, I'm Lori from Lori's Country Cottage. Welcome to How Tuesday. Recently, I had an opportunity to take a webinar with Teresa Coates. She's the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. She now exclusively travels around the U.S. teaching tips and tricks on using their cuddle fabric. So why don't you stay tuned? I've got a little video from her on creating one of these. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates, and I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. Today, we're going to be talking about making cuddle quilts. So we have 10 tips for you on making your own cuddle quilt. So if you haven't made one before, this is a great place to start. We have some other videos that you can watch about the actual construction, but these are some extra tips for you to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to get started with our tools. So I've got my cuddle kit here. I've got my spray adhesive. This is the 505 spray that I like so much and we'll talk about that in a little bit. My marking pen, I've got my stiletto, my uh, OD, the craft knife, my clover pins that I like so much, the Ulfa rotary cutter. This is the So Fine from Superior and I'll be using that today. These are my little Fomori scissors and of course a walking foot. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have everything that we've got. So when we get a kit, um, let me show you what's, what basically how they come. Okay, so when I have a kit, if I turn it over on the back here, it's going to tell me what size it is. So this is a Cuddle Kit Bambino. In, it's an Emmet is the name. Okay, and it is 28 by 37 approximately. We don't really care about this number besides just having an idea of how big it's going to be. Here it tells me the backing fabric, and I know what it is exactly. Okay, let me show you a different kit that we have. Okay, this is our mermaid tail kit, and you can see it has three colors on here, and that's because this is the suggested backing fabric. So when you're getting this, uh, you're gonna wanna pick one of these colors. I'm gonna suggest that you're gonna get something besides the Cuddle 3, okay? And we'll talk about that in just a second, but this is really good to remember, is to look at that back and make sure, am I getting a backing or am I not, okay? So let me show you a couple of examples on why you want to choose a certain kind of backing, okay? Let me get the rest of my tools out of the way here. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we got parchment paper. Um, we can also use scrap newspaper or, um, uh, freezer paper and that'll be often be on the um, the handout that it says freezer paper and that's what we want it for okay so I've got a couple of finished quilts here for you to see um, so this is the one that we did a couple of weeks ago with the cuddle backing where I quilted it and you can see how well these lines show up which is really beautiful and exactly what we wanted but when we're doing a cuddle strip quilt we're gonna do it quilt as you go and basically what happens is all of your lines will still show, but if you haven't done it as straight as you would like it to be, you can totally see that. So I like to not use Cuddle 3 for my backings, and I like to use a Luxe Cuddle. So this is our Rose Cuddle, and you can see these lines um, don't show up hardly at all. So you could do these just as crooked and nobody would ever know, um, which for me is sort of a thing is I wanna hide my mistakes. So um, I like to use a Lux Cuddle 3 or a marble or a hide. And today we're gonna be using a marble for our little strip quilt. Okay, so we've got our backing, we've got our kit, we've got all of our tools, and now we need to get our batting. Okay, so today we're gonna be using this batting. So this is the Quilter's Dream. This is our poly, the Quilter's Dream poly, which is super duper thin. And you can see it's just like an eighth of an inch or less. Okay. Really skinny little batting. That's what we're going to use today. But I wanted to talk to you because one of the questions that I often get is, do I have to use batting? And you don't have to use it. But I do like you to use it for the first few because it's easier. It gives you some stability in working with the with the cuddle and so the stretch of the cuddle um, will sort of be negated by the stability of the batting okay so this is the kind that i use you're welcome to use other kinds of batting if you prefer um, you can also use kona cotton inside so let me show you the differences okay so i have some examples here so this one is done with the batting inside got some cuddle dust in my eyelash um, so <laughs> we've got this one has got the batting inside and it's nice and stable you can see how that one works okay so I've got that one 
this one has the Kona cotton inside, which is just straight up, just regular Kona cotton, and I've used that instead of batting. And the reason I do that is because it's thinner and it's easier to work with in some ways, um, especially if you're working with a large quilt, but it still gives you st the stability that you want um, that you would get from the batting, okay? So that's the way this one is. I'm gonna show you all three in just a second. This one is done with no batting inside, so it is possible, you can do it, the thing is that it's hard, a little bit harder until you've gotten some practice with the cuddle. Because the two fabrics want to both stretch and move, getting them to work together is a little bit more difficult. You're definitely going to want to use basting spray with all three of them, but they end up with very different results, okay? So I just want to show you how they hang. All right, so I got my little helper. Okay. Okay, so this is the one that has no batting, no nothing inside of it. And you can see how drapey and yummy it is. Okay, this one has the Kona cotton inside. So you can see it has a little bit more stability. And then this one has the batting inside. Okay, so they hang very differently. They work differently together. Um, so it's really up to you which one you want to do. Um, they all work. So it just depends, it's a personal choice on which you like best. I definitely suggest that you start with the batting first though. So give that a shot and then you can make choices on how you want to go from there, okay? All right, so let's get started. Um, we're gonna cut our kit. So I've already cut my stuff, um, but you're gonna get your kit. Oh, can I have the kit box again? Um, so when you get your kit inside of it, you have everything except the backing sometimes, okay? So this is the larger one, and it tells me here, remember, that I need to buy backing for it, okay? And it tells me that this needs a 38 by 58 inches. So remember that the cuddle comes 60 inches wide. So that means I need 38 inches of cuddle for the back lengthwise. Okay, so I would buy like a yard and a quarter, and that would be enough backing for this. So, but inside, the cuddle kit includes five pre-cut 10 inch strips, binding and the pattern. So it always has your binding inside, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we would cut that. We would cut all of our strips, cut all of our binding, cut the backing the size that we need, cut our batting, all of that, and then I want you to clean up. So if you listen to our first couple of videos, we talked about the cleaning and how you're just gonna use just a wet washcloth, wipe down your board, then throw all of your strips, all of your binding into the dryer and let it tumble around for a little bit. That's what you wanna do now, okay? So you're gonna clean it all up, your board's gonna be nice and clean and you're not gonna be dragging any of the cuddle dust between your board and your sewing machine, which is really important to keep that bobbin case clean, okay? All right, so tip number three is to use the basting spray and it'll make it so much easier. When I go to classes and I teach them in stores, I always bring along an old sheet and you're w welcome to do something like that. Today, I've just got a piece of cotton from my stash that I have stuck out over the board and um, I've got one of the uh, DIY style magnetic boards. So I've been able to like put it magnet down and keep it outstretched. Um, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna use the basting spray and then we're gonna use that parchment paper that I have or you can use freezer paper or newspaper. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out our batting, okay? And I've got a smaller piece here than you would normally do. The smaller kits that we have are 27 by 27 inches, and this I think I made it at like 23 inches, just so it wasn't, um, that we could fit it on screen a little bit better. All right, all right, so I've got my batting, and then I've got um, my backing here, and I'm going to, get my parchment paper ready because I will need it okay so I've got my backing this is my backing that I'm using today this is the Lux Cuddle marble in blossom it's a really pretty color so we're gonna lay this out and so the, one of the reasons that I suggest that you start with a small quilt when you're doing this too is because you need to lay this out flat so if you are working on a large quilt, that's a big area that you have to lay out and it can be a little bit cumbersome until you learn some techniques. So do a small quilt first because you can get this whole thing on your table really easily and you can use your kitchen table, your cutting board, whatever it is you need to do. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay these out so they're nice and neat. All right, and then I'm gonna pull this back and I'm gonna put my parchment paper right under the edge. Okay move my stuff out of the way and I've got this just under the edge I'm not sure if you can see it but this is so that it will um, when I spray it it doesn't spray the right side of the fabric 
okay? Because I don't want to do that. So that's why I'm using the freezer paper and I've got my sheet laid out over my cutting mat. So I'm just going to spray this on. And so tip four is that we're going to spread it up. So in class, I always like to tell people that we're going to swim it up, all right? And then we're going to give it a good pat, okay? Move my parchment paper and then I'm going to flip this around. Okay, so now I've got the one end attached, but I'm going to pull this back, lay it out nice and flat again, and do the same thing. And I'm just going to work my way up the back of this batting so that it's all nice and flat. And what I have found is that if you do this little swimming thing, um, it gets it nice and flat and you won't end up with puckers because what happens is if you want to spray it, let me show you. So if we have it like this and I spray the back and I try to lay it this way, what happens a lot of times is you get puckers, it sticks to itself here, and it becomes kind of a pain. So this just keeps that from happening and we'll make it nice and smooth, okay? So now I'm going to spray a little bit more. Once I get to this last edge, I'm going to use my parchment paper again to make sure I don't spray on the front. Okay. And then I'm going to spray that last little edge. And you can see I'm not spraying a whole lot because I just want it to just stick a little bit. I'm not really trying to spray paint it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that this is all washable. So if you overspray and you get it on your mat, it's totally fine. You're just going to take some warm soapy water and wash it off. Okay, so now I've got this together. I've got my batting and my backing stuck together nice and well. Okay, and then we're going to turn it over, and we're going to start in the center, okay? So tip five is to work from the center out, okay? So I'm going to fold this in half because I want to find my middle. The reason we want to do that, we're going to start from the center and go out, is because people get confused really easily on which strip goes next. On something this small, it's really easy to tell. On a larger quilt, when there's, you know, 10 or 12 strips, it can get sometimes confusing. Okay. So what I do is I fold this in half. So I folded my backing in half with my batting side up. Now I'm going to take this as my strip for the front that's going to go in the center. It's a nice big strip, okay, and I'm going to make sure that my nap goes the right direction. This one's easy to tell because it's directional fabric. And then I'm going to fold this in half, okay. So I'm going to fold this in half and get these folds to bump up to each other. Then I'm going to unfold this again. I'm going to hold on, and I'm going to open it up, OK? So once I'm here, I'm going to use that basting spray one more time, and I'm going to get this center strip on there. All right, and I'm just going to spray the back of this. I sort of just pull it out, pat it down. I'm going to do the other half. Okay, and I always spray the back of the fabric and not the batting. Um, and that's just because the back of the fabric, if you're using a cotton, it'll soak into the batting. See, there's a little pinch that it'll make because I didn't swim it out as well as I should have. Um, but in the cotton batting, it can soak into the batting. And so I always just spray the back of the fabric because it's poly and it's not going to soak in. All right, so tip six is that we're going to lay our, our strips right side up to make sure that the the nap is going in the right direction. Okay, this is a lux cuddle, and so it's not as um, visible, I guess. I can tell that the nap that runs this way in it. It's a little swirly, so you can't tell as well. But if I were to use this as my neck strip, this I can totally tell. Okay, so this my nap is going the wrong direction. This one, it's going the right direction. So when I would, I'm putting this on a quilt, what I will always do is I will lay it out how I want the neck strip to go, and then I'll pet it. Okay, and make sure that that's right. If I have this wrong, you can see it'll look weird. Okay, so the reason I do this is because for me, I'm a very visual learner, and if I do this and I pet it, then I can actually just flip it over right sides together and go. If I do it, if I try to figure out which way to lay it with the nap going the right direction without laying it first up, I get really confused. So this is just for me, it's a visual learner and it seems to help. So our next row is actually gonna be this Lux Cuddle, which I can tell this is the right direction. 
Okay, so then I can flip it right sides over. So then you can see on the Lux Cuddle, we have all of this nap that hangs out. So what I do is this little thing where I sort of just push it up and it shoves the nap right out of the way. And then we're gonna pin it, okay? So when you're using something like the Llama Cuddle, you're really gonna wanna do this where you sort of slide it up and get it out of the way, okay? And then we're gonna pin it, okay? So if you're right-handed, I want you to pin on the other side. So pin on the far side. The reason we do that is because, and that's tip eight, is that you're gonna pin it on the other side. So you're gonna pin it so that when you sew, it hits the tip of the pin first, all right? So if I'm left-handed and I pin this direction, it's gonna hit the head of my pin first when I'm sewing and I don't want that. So left-hander sew, pin closer to you, right-handers pin further away. All right, and then tip nine, we're just gonna do that double pinning like we've talked about before. All right, and basically this just involves two rows of pins. So you can see I just swoop it up here. That's what I was talking about before. I just push the nap out of the way. Okay, and I'm gonna do two rows of pins. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna pin every few inches, and if a little bit pokes out, it's fine. What I do wanna make sure is that I can see that back fabric the entire time so it doesn't get lost in there. All right, so I'm gonna pin this and then I'm gonna pin down below a few times here to keep it all in place. Okay, I'm gonna pin all the way across here. And basically the way when you put these kits together is you're gonna do this. So each row you're gonna pin it and then you're gonna sew it and then I'm gonna show you how we baste it. Okay, and you're gonna do that the whole way across or with each, with each row. And like I said, working from the center, oh, I'm pinning it to my, cloth. Um, you're going to um, do that working from the center out so that uh, you can keep it nice and even. Okay, because like I said, what happens is that sometimes we want to do it so that we've pinned it or we put it together so that the, the strips are not in the right order. So we're going to fix it. Okay, I just learned a, a reason to move that cloth after you do your basting spray. All right. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple more pins in here, not through my back fabric. Okay, and you can see this little zigzag approach. Just hold it all down nice and flat, and we'll make it easy to go through the machine. So I'm gonna take this over to my machine. I'm using the Crescendo Baby Lock today, and we're gonna sew this down, okay? So now I'm over at my baby lock here, and I'm just gonna stick this right under here. This is my half inch marking, and I'm gonna use that. It's actually a half inch, it's just about here, but I like to use just over a little bit. Um, it makes it a little bit less than a half an inch, and that works fine for me, okay? So I'm gonna start here. I'm not gonna back stitch. I've got it at a 3.5 stitch length. Okay, let me get that over there. Make sure, oh shoot. Okay, it's at a 3.5 stitch length, and um, I've got my stiletto here that I'm gonna be able to feed this through and then make sure and take these pins out. So what I like to do is I get this in here and I put my needle down and take that first pin out. Okay, so it's not gonna get in my way. All right, and I'm just gonna sew this. Like I said, I'm not gonna back stitch at all. Uh, the one reason is because we're gonna cut those edges off anyway. Um, but the other is that if I have to take it out, I really don't wanna take out those back stitches. Okay, so I'm gonna take these pins out before I get there. I'm gonna use that stiletto to just hold it in place as I'm sewing. Okay, and you can see the Baby Lock does really well with this fabric. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep it nice and even as I'm coming through here. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure that you're keeping a straight stitch and um, not so much that you're following the edge, but that your line is straight. Okay. All right, we're gonna go all the way across. Make sure I get my pins out. And you can see I've left these pins over on the left because that holds it nice and flat as I'm sewing and keeps it a little bit more stable for me. All right, so I'm gonna get to the end here. I'm gonna hold my stiletto down, let it come feed right off the end here. Clip my thread, and then we'll take it back over to the table. All right, now we're gonna take these pins out, okay? 
I'm going to take these out. You can see my line is fairly straight. I wobbled a little here. It's okay. All right. So when you wobble a little, you're going to be really happy that you actually can't see it from this side. So from this side, it looks perfectly straight. Um, and now you can see from this side, you can't really tell the difference either. And if I have my stiletto, I'm just going to come back up in here and I'm going to flip up those seams and all of a sudden it's completely hidden and nobody has any idea that I'm not a perfect sewist. Yay. All right, so then what you're gonna do when you're putting your kit together is you're gonna go from this point, you're gonna do your, um, you're gonna spray the back of this and put it back up again. So let me show you that. Use my little sheet here. Okay, and I'm gonna spray this just a little bit and push it up. Okay, we want to get that pulled nice and taut because um, what we're doing is we're trying to keep these three layers um, without having any um, folds in it, I guess. So this part you can see, I've, I spray basted this, it's nice and flat. I left this part, I didn't spray baste this because I wanted to show you what it does. So the knit will like to curl and so you can see if I were to pin this here, I'm going to have some extra fabric in there. So I want to make sure that that's pushed as far up as I can. The spray base works really well for that. If you really don't want to spray baste, you're just going to need to pull this up and then pin really well. Put your neck strip on and pin really well over that and then take out your bottom pins. Basting spray just makes it so much easier. Okay, so once we've gotten all of our all of our strips done, we would straighten up our sides, okay? So um, let me grab my other quilt real fast. All right, so this is one that I did earlier that, I've, that I have um, squared up. But basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna pretend like I've got my, the rest of my strips on here and I'm gonna show you how I square this. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of the lines on my ruler, okay, and I'm gonna match them to my seams. And so what I like to do, if I'm doing a large quilt, I use the, the long, like 24 inch ruler and I can compare it to a couple of different seams and I'll get it lined up on one of these and then I'll just trim this off. And you're gonna see, like if I were to trim this, if I finished this quilt and I trimmed it, my backing is bigger than my front, okay? We're gonna, um, we're just gonna trim that off and it's not gonna be even and it's fine, but when we're done, we'll have it nice and even on the edges, okay? So you can see, nice and even. And then we're just gonna go ahead and bind it, okay? So that's, that's tip number 10, is just to use your seams as the guideline for that. And don't worry about the measurement. So even if your kit says that it's 28 by 37 or whatever, doesn't matter if it actually measures up to that. The only time you care about that is how much batting to get. Otherwise, the quilt can end up whatever size it ends up, and that's totally fine, okay? So your bonus tip is that I want you to practice on a wee one first. So the wee ones are the little guys. Um, and um, they work perfectly fine to do the small ones. So they're 27 by 27 inches. They're just a little one. Um, and usually we have one that's called a moonwalk that's really easy. And it's sort of like the little one I was working on today that it has, I think, seven strips is all. Super duper easy. And it's the best way to start, okay? So I really recommend that I know that you wanna make a big quilt because they're really beautiful. Start with a little one, learn the techniques, figure out how you work with the fabric and the basting spray and all of that good stuff. And then move on to a larger quilt, okay? We do have a few different variations. Let me show you really quick. So the one um, that I was showing you, the Bambino size, that's this size, okay? So that's this one, okay? Great size for a, for a baby's uh, crib or anything like that, okay? Perfect size for that. And we have a larger one called the Fab Five that uses five different fabrics. And that one requires a little bit more cutting. And interestingly, this one is put together the same way, but even though that it's, it's a long quilt, it's put together sideways. So what you can also do is buy two of those kits and make a big full-size blanket with it, which is great. Okay, so this is our um, Sweet Tweets, I think is what it's called, which is a very large blanket. Okay, it's big. I can't really show you all of it. Um, but it's a big guy, but it's put together this direction. Okay, super duper cute. So you can see, it's a nice big one. Okay, this is a great one. And um, we have that one in a whole bunch of different varieties. So that's a great place to start too. And that's more of like a, a child toddler bed size or a good throw. Um, and most of the kits that we have in that are child friendly. The larger ones are more adult friendly. Okay, all right. So I think that was all of the tips. All right, it's, so go, I'll go through all 10 again. Um, 
grab my notes here, make sure I get it right. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we start with grabbing everything that you need. So make sure that you have your batting, your backing, your kit, all of that stuff and all of your tools, your stretch needle, the thread, your walking foot, basting spray, all of that. And make sure that you're using the 505 basting spray. Okay, we wanna cut the whole kit and then we're gonna clean up our area with the washcloth and tumble it in the dryer. Get rid of all the cuddle dust that we can. Number three, we're gonna use the basting spray and we're gonna um, use that to um, keep our stuff nice and flat. And then we're gonna make sure that we cover our sewing area so that we're not spraying any basting spray near where we're actually, like where our sewing machine is gonna be. And then clean up after you're done with wet, wa wet washcloth and warm soapy water, okay? So tip number four is to spread the backing onto the batting, okay? And that was that little swim stroke I was showing you to push it up and out to get it nice and flat, okay? Tip five is to work from the center out. And that's so you don't get confused as to which step is next. You're just gonna know, like you're gonna sew the center strip and then it's gonna be the blue strip and the blue strip and then the red strip and the red strip. And that makes it so much easier to do and you won't get confused, okay? Tip number six is to start with your strips right side up so you can do that little petting thing and make sure your strips are all, the nap is all going in the same direction, all right? Tip seven is to push the nap out of the way when you're working with the Lux Cuddle. So I do that just by kind of shoving the, shoving the strips up just a little bit and then pinning them, all right? And that keeps the nap out of the way so I can see where I'm sewing. Okay, tip eight is to pin on the far side if you're right-handed and on the near side if you're left-handed. And that just helps our pins go in the right direction so that they're easy to take out when we're sewing. All right, you don't wanna sew it so that you have to take the heads out long before you get to the tips because you have to take them out so early that you're kind of losing the effectiveness of the pins. All right, tip nine is to always double pin when you're making these strip quilts and to make it so much easier, all right? And tip 10 is to use your seams as the guide for where you wanna square up your quilt. You don't need to measure it. You don't need to make sure any of that. You can just use those seam guides, get it nice and square. The same with the end one, you're just gonna use your seam as the guide to get a four inch or six inch strip, all right? So do that. Tip 11, the little bonus tip, is just to practice, okay? One of the great ways that you can practice is with these strip quilts or strip kits that we have at a lot of stores where they can buy these boxes of 10 inch strips. It's a great way to do it. You can buy four or five of these strips, put them together in any order that you want to, and it's your quilt. Um, so you get to be a lot more um, the designer of the quilt, which is great. So you can also buy yardage, but a lot of stores have these strips that are already pre-cut, which is awesome, okay? You can find more patterns for using our strips at, on our website at shannonfabrics.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little presentation by Teresa. Hopefully she's given you some tips and encouragement to try to make your own cuddle strip quilt. Thanks for watching. I'm Lori from Lori's Country Cottage.